This is fifth grade ELA, text set five, um, the power of knowledge. The essential question is, what is the essential question? How can we obtain knowledge and use it for good? The goal for today is to understand, con oh no, infer the author's purpose in choosing one episode to ex exemplify Richard's, no, that's not it. Notice and understand the characteristics of a biography. Okay. Think about something you've wanted so badly but couldn't have for some reason that felt unfair to you. Were you able to get it eventually? How did that feel? What kinds of things might you want that could change the whole course of your life? This is a bi biography is about a great African-American writer. When he was a teenager, he hungered for something that might seem simple to you. But he couldn't get it because of his race, so he took some big risks. The book is called Richard Wright and the Library Card. It's written by William Miller and illustrated by Gregor Christie. Let's, out, fi let's find out what risk he took and why. Richard loved the sound of words. He loved the stories his mother told about the farm where she grew up. There was a willow tree by a bend in the river. She explained, explained I, dr I dreamed all my girl dreams down there. Richard loved to hear his grandmother tell about the war, how he ran away from his master and fought the rebel army. I was only a boy, his grandfather said proudly, but I fought as well as my, my, my man, any man. I fought in the rain and the mud. I carried the flag at the head of the troops. Richard longed to read stories on his own, but his family was very poor. They moved often, looking for work in different towns and cities. His father cleaned office buildings. His mother cooked in the kitchens of wealthy white people. Richard had little chance to go to school. His mother taught him when she could, reading the funny papers out loud, sounding each word carefully. When Richard finally learned to read, he couldn't buy or borrow the books he wanted so badly, but books were expensive. The doors of the library were shut against him because he was black, so Richard read whatever he could find. Old, news old newspapers, books without covers, pulled from ash cans. When Richard was 17, he caught a bus to Memphis. He hoped to find work, earn mo enough money to move to Chicago, where he would make a new life for himself in the North. Richard walked the hot streets looking for a job that would be his ticket to freedom. He saw many young men like himself searching for the same job, the same way out. He finally found a place in the optician's office. He polished eyeglasses, swept the floors, and he ran errands for the white man. As long as he kept his head down and as long as he began every sentence with sir, Richard was safe. So to be safe, Richard had to begin every sentence with sir at his job. Let's talk about that. What dangers did Richard need to worry about? At night, Richard returned to the boarding house where he had re rented a room to save money. He ate beans from the can, warmed by water from the tap, listened to the noise of the street below his window. Richard felt a familiar hunger for words. There were thousands of books in the public library, but only white people could get a card, could take them out. But Richard had an idea. At work, he looked around the office, trying to find one man who might understand his hunger for books. So Richard is hungry for books. Why might that be? What would books do for him? Let's see. For the most part, they were like so many white men he had known before. They would never understand a black boy who wanted a library card, a black boy who wanted to read books even they, even they didn't read. Only one man seemed different from the others, Jim Falk. Falk kept to himself and the other men ignored him as they ignored Richard. Several times Richard had been sent to the library to check out books for him. One day when the other men were out for lunch to lunch and Jim was eating alone at his desk, Richard approached him. I need your help, Richard said. Are you in some kind of trouble? Jim asked when a suspicious look. I want to read books. I want to use the library, but I can't get a card, Richard said, hoping Jim would not laugh in his face. What do you want to read? Jim asked cautiously. Novels, plays, history? Richard felt confused. His mind was racing so fast he could, couldn't think of a single book. Jim said nothing, but reached into his desk and brought up a worn white card. He handed it to Richard. How will you use it? Jim asked. I'll write a note, Richard said, like the ones you wrote when I got books for you. All right, Jim, sir, Jim said nervously, but don't tell anyone else. I don't want to get in trouble. No, sir. Promised. Richard promised. I'll be careful. So in what way do you think Richard needed to be careful? What could happen to get Jim in trouble. 
After work, Richard walked through the crowded streets to the library. He felt as if he were on a train to Chicago, as if he was traveling north already. But when Richard walked through the door, he felt the odd, old fear again. Many heads were raised at the sight of a black boy in the library. Richard kept his eyes down, not looking up until he stood behind before the checkout desk. The librarian put on her glasses to make sure she wasn't seeing things. Richard handed her the note he had written and stepped back. Why can't Mr. Falk get his own books? She said sharply. He's very busy, Richard explained. Replied, his legs trembling. All right, the woman said, but you tell Mr. Falk I'd rather see him in person next time. Richard roamed the stacks, unable to believe there were this this many books in the world. He touched the leather spines and fingered the pages that he had dreamed about for such a long time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the author wrote that Richard felt as if he was traveling north already. What does he mean? What does the library card represent to him? Are you sure these books aren't for use? The librarian asked in a loud voice when he t went to check them out. Once again, heads turned and Richard felt the eyes of white people on him. He thought he had been caught, that he would never be able to read the books he wanted so badly. But Richard told the lady what she wanted to hear and what she believed was true about all black boys like me. No, ma'am, he said. These books aren't for me. Heck, I can't even read. The librarian laughed out loud and stamped his books. Richard heard other people laugh as he walked out the door. So what word describes the people in the library? Would you have done what Richard did? That night in his room, Richard read until the sun dimmed the electric light. He read the words of Dickens, Tulsi, and Stephen Crane. He read about people who had suffered as he had, even though their skin was white. They longed for the same freedom Richard had spent his life trying to find. With the light of the sun coming through the window, Richard put down the book. He felt sleepy, but the words he had read echoed in his ears, colored everything he saw. He wondered if he could, if he would act differently, if others would see how the book, books had changed him. Richard knew he would never be the same again. That morning, he carried his books to work in the newspaper. Whoever, whenever he had a chance, whenever the book office was empty for a moment, he read. Mr. Falk walked over, pretending that he was asking Richard to go and pick up his laundry for him. What did you get? he asked. Under his breath, Richard opened the newspaper and showed him. Jim seemed shocked at first, but then a smile came over his face. Those are powerful books, Richard, he said. Those books will stay with you for the rest of your life. But for now, he said, looking around the office, you should keep them to yourself. Jim describes the book as powerful. What makes a book powerful? Richard tried to do just that, but at the, as the time for the journey north came closer, he didn't care who saw him reading. The men in the office either laughed at him or asked him if he was crazy. What a, what's a colored boy like you toting a, big, a bag full of books around for? Your head can't hold all them big words. Every now and then, just Jim smiled at him from across the room. The library book had changed some of Richard's feelings about white people. Richard still feared them, but he understood them better. The day he left for Chicago, Richard stopped by Mr. Falk's desk. Thank you, Richard said. Thank you for the books. Thank you for everything. Jim didn't say a word, but he shook Richard's hand in front of everybody. On the train going north, flying across the open field, Richard remembered the books he had read. The words came back to him. The story is more real than the train itself. Every page was a ticket to freedom, to the place where he would always be free. Author's note, Richard Wright in the library card is a fictionalized amount account of an important episode from the life of Richard Wright. Wright was born on September 4, 1908, near Knoltz, Mississippi. His family moved often looking for work, and Richard was educated in a number of different schools. His formal education ended after he completed the ninth grade. In 1926, he moved to Memphis and worked for an optical, optical company. During this time, he gained access to the library card. Public library with the help of a co-worker. He read many books during this period, which inspired him to become a writer. Richard moved to Chicago in 1927 and worked for the post office before publishing his first stories. His novel, Native Son, published in 1940, 1940 became an international bestseller. Black Boy, his autobiography, was published in 1945 to get acclaim. This book is based on a scene from Black Boy. Richard Wright died in France in 1960.